PSA for everyone in the drone community. If you're watching a video from someone who claims to have found a way to beat the system, but isn't a lawyer, guess what? They won't be posting your bail and they're not gonna be helping you with your fines. So buyers beware. And yes, we are talking about remote ID. And no, I'm not a big fan of remote ID myself, but I'm a lot less of a fan of all the misinformation we've been seeing from so-called YouTubers over the last couple of weeks, even a couple of months. In all reality, it's gonna be a mess. And we called it, if you watched this video from a year ago, we called it shitstorm. Now, back then we were talking about the FAA, but some in the community now are creating a lot more of a mess. And well, that's not cool. Oh, not cool, not cool. In today's video, we're gonna talk about six different myths that we've been seeing over and over again. And we're gonna tell you if they're real or if they're not based on actual data. Now, as we go through this video, I want you to remember the following. Remote ID is about locating the drone that is flying right now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, right here at this moment. And why? Why is it in place? It's because three-letter agencies want to know where a good drone and a bad drone is going to be located and if something is coming into an area where there's not supposed to be a drone. That's really the bottom line. If you think the FAA is after the hobby, is after Part 107 pilots because they want drone deliveries to fly, I don't think that's the case. I, 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 will, I will put my next paycheck on the line. It is not the reason why the FAA wanted to see remote ID. Initially, the FAA wanted remote ID because they wanted a way to separate traffic just like they do with other devices. It's since been kind of hijacked by other agencies to do something that wasn't intended in the first place. So keep that in mind as we go through all these different myths. All right, the first myth that we hear all the time is remote ID is gonna kill the hobby, it's gonna kill racing, it's gonna kill education, and I don't think so. And here's why. Look at the current existing enforcement actions that the FAA has taken about drone pilots, against drone pilots. That's right, not a whole lot. Even the most public one, we talked about this several years ago, $182,000 fine that was proposed against this one dude that was flying like an idiot. Guess what? He's still doing it, okay? He's still flying beyond visual line of sight. He's still flying over uh, areas where he's not supposed to. He's still flying over moving vehicle, moving over people. And guess what? Well, nothing has happened to him, right? So there will be these temporary or event free as the FAA recognized identification areas where you can fly at, uh, at an event without having remote ID. We just came back from Flight Fest. Flight Fest will likely have a FRIA next year in place where educational flights will be able to happen, where racing flights will be able to happen as well without the need for remote ID. As far as the hobby, the hobby is still growing. Even though, yes, the number of registration has been down as per the FAA database, it doesn't mean that fewer people are actually buying drones. So is the, is, is the hobby dying? It's absolutely not dying. We are seeing more and more people getting into this hobby on our side, on other people's side, that uh, shows us that th this is nowhere near the death of the hobby. And guess what? People that don't want to comply are not going to comply and are going to keep on flying. They're not going to stop because of remote IDs. So the hobby isn't going anywhere, be assured of that. Myth number two, this is going to make flying unsafe. And I, quite frankly, this is the only one bit that I have seen coming out of videos, complaints about remote ID that I have to agree with. I do not like the location of the pilot being shared with the rest of the general public out there that has a phone or something to receive that remote ID signal. Now, as we get closer to September, I'm gonna say this, the range of these modules is extremely limited, okay? Not only that, but most of the devices that were designed in the first place to capture that device, I'm talking about your iPhone, I'm talking about your Android phone, well, guess what? iPhones at the moment cannot pick the signal from remote ID. Why? Because the Wi-Fi signal that comes out of a remote ID is just not compatible with the way that the iPhone software is designed. So that takes about, what, half of all the, the cell phones out there. If you have somebody who's trying to look if there is a drone flying in the area because they want to complain about it, chances are they won't be able to do it. Now, number two, based on this, remember, how many of you right now watching this video know how to go and find a drone that's broadcasting remote ID? Not many people, I can tell you that. From all the people we've been talking to, not a whole lot of people know how to do this. How many people do you think in the general community that are not in any way, shape or form involved with drones, how many of these people do you think are going to go and know that they can download an app, which app, and how to set it up so that they can actually receive the signal? Not many people. So I think 
the fear that a lot of people will be able to just pull a cell phone and it's gonna tell them right away, hey, there's this drone flying right here. I don't think it's gonna happen. And, and I'm an optimist in general, but I don't think it's gonna happen. I just don't think people that want to find what this drone is doing, I think they're just gonna give up. They're gonna pull their phone. If they have an iPhone, right away, they're out. If they have an Android, they're gonna have to go to a store to download an app and then turn it on and then see what the signal is actually even telling them. So. Um, on top of all this, the modules that we have been testing so far, the distance at which you can pick up that signal with a cell phone is very minimal, all right? And we will be posting some of these numbers very soon, but these numbers are just not that impressive, which means that if you see a drone in the distance, you pull up your phone, even if it's compatible, chances are you won't be able to get the signal. So should we be afraid of this? Yes, absolutely. I don't like the idea of the, the location of the pilot being shared. Is it gonna be in real life an issue? I don't think so. So we'll see that when comes September and when we have more modules available. But at this stage, I wouldn't worry too much. Myth number three, this is another one that we hear quite a bit. Well, this isn't happening with airplanes. You cannot track airplane. Well, guess what? You can actually track airplanes. Every airplane that's flying out there in certain airspace, they have what's called ADSB, and ADSB is going to share that signal and it's going to be available online. You can go right now on a variety of different websites and type a tail number and then find out where that aircraft is located. Now you're going to say, yes, it's not available in all airspace, and I agree, but in most airspace, when aircraft are flying at low altitude, close to airports, close to busy areas, they're going to have to transmit that information. And guess what? That the ADSB at the time when it came out was $10,000 to put on an airplane. Ask me how I know because I was managing a fleet of 55 aircraft and we had to equip these aircraft. So yes, it is available on other parts of the aviation industry. Myth number four, one of my favorite because this can get you in a whole lot of trouble and this is turning off the GPS on your transmitter, pretending that you are about to have an emergency. And this came from some dude online where he said, well, guess what? You can comply. Uh, you don't have to comply with remote ID because you can just say, um, I'm going to have an emergency because somebody is going to find me and then it's going to cause trouble and it's going to create an emergency. So uh, I'm just going to turn off GPS on my transmitter. And that means that I'm covered because in the regulation, it says that uh, if there is an emergency, I can break the regulation. That's not how it works. I'm sorry to break it to you, but that's just not how the FAA works. And if you're going to declare an emergency, why did you take off? That's the first thing the FAA is gonna say. If you declared an emergency, why did you take off? If you were in an airplane and you declared an emergency and said, my engine just died, and or you said something is on fire, and then you say, well, I'm gonna take off anyway because uh, it's an emergency and I can do whatever I want. It's not how it works. You cannot declare an emergency and then take off. Not only that, that person uh, not knowing the regulation was quoting part 91, which does not apply to drone operation. Part 107 or USC 44809 is what we're interested in here. So please, please, please don't turn off the transmitter thinking that it's gonna allow you legally to do this. This is what this person claimed because, well, it's not legal. Myth number five, another great one from the tinfoil hatters. Uh, this one is wrapping your module in foil. Well, guess what? That's going to interfere with the message of the module, which goes against 14 CFR part 89.310 Foxtrot. And uh, we'll put a link down in the description if you wanna read it fully. But uh, in this case, if you're gonna go through the trouble of putting a module inside of foil on top of your drone, don't put a module, just go fly without it, okay? Uh, then at least you can pretend that you don't know the rules and tell the FAA inspector, I'm sorry, Mr. Inspector, I didn't know that was a rule. Uh, I'm not gonna do it again. Come on, we're sorry, okay? But if you have the thing wrapped in foil, first off, you wasted 60 bucks and uh, well, I don't know, use your foil for something else, uh, which uh, based on some of the people recommending this, uh, they are using it too much of it. Myth number six, here's an interesting one, and I'm not even sure I wanna talk about this, but uh, enough people have been uh, claiming that it's a way to combat remote ID, which is using spoofing devices. And uh, specifically, someone mentioning that you should be doing this around airports. And uh, if someone wanted to be that guy, sure, go ahead and be that guy. But let me remind you this. Um, Spoofing messages of drones near airports is gonna do what? It's going to interfere with operation in the national airspace system, which guess what? 
the national airspace system is considered an infrastructure. A deliberate act to disrupt infrastructure is called an act of terrorism. That's right, you heard me right. That is called an act of terrorism. If you're going to go around and have spoofing devices that pretend to be drones near airports, you could be arrested on terrorism charges. But you know what? The people that are recommending this have a Patreon. They have to get the views, they have to get the money because they can get the money in the country that they live because aviation is not all that interesting there. So be very careful getting, again, information from people that are not gonna bail you out of uh, jail when you get arrested on terrorism uh, uh, charges. All right, this is all we have. We're gonna wrap this up. I'm sure you're gonna have comments. Leave them down in this section right here. Uh, this is all we've seen recently published about Remote ID. I'm sure there will be more. Uh, we will be complying. Like I said, there are things that I don't like about Remote ID, but the time to complain about this was about 2019 when the NPRM came out. Uh, if you didn't do it back then, then it was too late. Uh, three months before Remote ID goes into effect is uh, probably a little bit too late. If you don't wanna comply, don't comply. That's really all I can tell you at this stage. But uh, if you have any other questions, put them in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.